Greetings everyone. Welcome to today's lecture on exclusion, poverty and economic development in India which is part of the ongoing lecture series that is going on for inequality and difference. In this lecture I would be describing the context of social exclusion along with the various parameters that go into making exclusion happen. When we are talking about social exclusion, it refers to discrimination, deprivation, isolation, segregation, separate, uh, separation, ostracism and excommunication of individual and groups in the society. And if we talk about the origin of the concept, the historical roots of the concept of social exclusion can, can be traced back to Aristotle, while the contemporary notion of exclusion can be traced to France in the 1970s, which can be linked to a perceived breakdown in social cohesion following civil unrest in the late 1960s and 70s in the context of growing unemployment and emerging socio-economic inequalities. Well, uh, talking about the development of the concept, the exploration of the contemporary interest in social exclusion began in 1974 when René Lenoir then Secretary of State for Social Action in a French uh, Gaullist government first popularized the term. The term soon spread over Europe and in 1989 the European Commission passed a resolution as well to fight social exclusion and to promote integration. Rapid spread across nation states and global regions, uh, soon the concept of inclusion became inevitable in planning and the term social exclusion began to be used in several ways at different times to reflect different institutional, political, historical and geographical contexts. Now, while the world over the problem of social exclusion has been realized and so many uh, policy perspectives have also emerged, however, if we talk about the reality, then several experimental studies in the US and the Western world uh, have pointed out that how the resumes of applicants with uh, which belong to the colored races, the Latinos, uh, as compared to the white names, uh, even if they are equal in several other parameters like uh, uh, educational uh, criteria or uh, job experience, yet the entry level jobs for the whites and the non whites show huge discrimination. Uh, even for India, this kind of a research uh, that was conducted by Hoff and Pandey in 2004 also indicates that uh, as compared to Dalit junior high school students in a village in Uttar Pradesh, uh, a, uh, an experiment that was uh, conducted showed that the three tasks of solving mazes were given to a mixed group. In the first case, the caste of students was not publicly revealed, while in the second case, the caste of each subject, that means each participant was publicly announced and in the third, students were separated into high and low caste groups and then the caste of each group was revealed. Now, what were the findings of this uh, kind of an experiment? No statistically significant difference in the performance appeared when caste was not mentioned or when it was a completely uh, anonymous kind of uh, uh, caste grouping. Uh, and the gap became significant when caste was made salient. 
the announcement reduced the average number of mazes that was solved by SC subjects by 23 percent. So, this indicates that how uh, discrimination in the name of caste uh, continues to prevail even after so many policy frameworks uh, evolving from time to time. Recent work in India suggests subtle stereotyping in private sector hiring also as was indicated by Desh Pandey and Newman uh, in 2009 who found out uh, that the prospective hiring managers almost universally asked questions about family backgrounds uh, during uh, employment interviews and while the upper caste students could offer biographies that were much closer to the upper middle class professional ideal, the Dalit students perceived a hidden agenda in asking questions related to the family background while for upper caste students the same questions were welcome and were considered as important from a human resources perspective. Then uh, the next category that one can talk about uh, is that of women. Huge gains in human development have been made as far as women's voice and visibility is concerned. Yet the risk of losing life in childbirth in India is higher than in countries like Honduras or Swaziland. Only half of all women receive three or more antenatal care visits and over one third of Indian women reported having experienced spousal violence at some point of time and about one fourth had experienced violence in the year uh, previous to the NFHS 2005-2006. So, spousal violence is correlated with poor access to maternal health and also poor child health outcomes. If we talk about women's labor force participation, then women's visibility in the urban high-end labor market is much greater than it was uh, several decades ago. But this again cannot be made a generalized statement labor force participation of women belonging to 15 to 59 years of age ha has been steady at about one third of population and stagnation is also rampant in the rural areas. Huge diversity also exists by states as well as by caste and tribal status. Female disadvantage in India has persisted especially in health and in the labor market and violence also has had serious effects. If we look at this graph which shows the rising number of missing girls as per census 2011, it shows the declining child sex ratios and uh, worsening in states which had earlier not been affected by the phenomenon of sun preference. So, this is also symptomatic of the wider deprivation that is pervading the society. Violence as a significant uh, variable can also be explained from this graph that is being shared and it also explains very poor health outcomes. Now, if we talk about the policy responses, there have been a number of policy responses uh, post independence uh, and a large number of these have been imbibed in our constitution itself. So, for example, reservations in publicly funded educational and public employment is one such example. Then even in terms of legal uh, aspects, we can say that there are laws against violence and atrocities as well as for equal opportunity. And if we talk about administrative factors, here also uh, specific targeted programs have been designed from time to time uh, pertaining to health, education and social protection. However, the problem of voice and accountability continues to persist.
excluded groups often have low voice and also political clout while the elite belongs to the creamy layer uh, st's show the slowest pace of improvements in a range of areas caste also seems to be reinventing itself in response to economic opportunities but a large number of dalits are still held back by their initial disadvantage so one must now also talk about as to what are the recommendations to deal with this persistent problem of exclusion one is of course to create legal regulatory and uh, a very responsive policy framework that could promote social inclusion then also there is a need to ensure that socially excluded groups still benefit from public spending as much as possible improved economic opportunities for excluded groups also must be made available on a regular basis by the government also there is a need to promote their political participation and empower them to utilize their voices there is a need to increase accountability of individuals governments and groups to protect citizens rights and also there is a need to adopt a more proactive approach to tackle prejudice which still continues to per, uh, prevail in indian society so if we are talking about constitution and how inclusion is promoted in indian constitution we can say that the provisions and privileges that indian constitution offers to the marginalized groups is a part of positive discrimination policy article 14 is very relevant in this the state shall not deny to any person equality before the law or the equal protection of the laws within the territory of india also prohibition of discrimination on grounds of religion race caste sex or place of birth is also taken care of by article 14 Article 14 offers special privileges for the marginalized groups also and as is mentioned in article 15 uh, nothing in the constitution can prevent the state from making any special provision for women and children so the state works for prohibition of discrimination on grounds of religion race caste sex or place of birth however on the basis of this the state should not hesitate to offer special provisions for marginalized people article 15 also mentions that nothing in the article uh, uh, or in this article or in any other article can prevent the state from making any special provision for the advancement of any socially or educationally backward classes of citizens or for the scheduled castes and the scheduled tribes the indian constitution further says that the state shall not misinterpret the main clause of the article 15 and clause 2 of the article 29 for denying the special provision for the marginalized ones article 17 is also very important as untouchability is abolished and its practice in any form is forbidden the enforcement of any disability arising out of untouchability shall be an offense punishable in accordance with law then article 30 mentions that all minorities whether based on religion or language shall have the right to establish and administer educational institutions of their choice the state shall not in granting aid to educational institutions discriminate against any educational institution simply on the ground that it is under the management of a minority whether based on religion or language article 350a 
further mentions that it shall be the endeavor of every state and of every local authority within the state to provide adequate facilities for instruction in the mother tongue at the primary stage of education to children belonging to linguistic minority groups so with so many provisions a question that arises is as to why social exclusion still continues to exist here i would like to mention amartya sen's uh, position that he has taken on ex- exclusion so amartya sen has described exclusion as impoverishment social exclusion will lead to the impoverishment of human life through their causal sequences so what people are excluded from is very important to understand so people according to amartya sen are excluded from a livelihood a secure and permanent employment earnings property land housing education and skills there are a number of causes for exclusion inequalities created through colonialism slavery control over land and resources inter ethnic inter regional and inter religious tensions conflicts discrimination inter caste troubles disrespect to diversity absence of effective redistributive policy then the geographical location quality of governance a weak distributive capacity of the government all these are some of the causes that one can outline then sen has also classified social exclusion as being active exclusion and passive exclusion what he means by active exclusion is fostering of exclusion through the deliberate policy interventions by the government or by any other willful agents to exclude some people from some opportunity and passive exclusion basically works through the social process and this process is not time bound and it is not as if it is of recent manifestation rather it has clear cut socio cultural historical genesis especially for a country like india so it is in this background that the issue of caste and social exclusion becomes very relevant social exclusion in india dates back more than 3 millennia and modern india now faces institutionalized social exclusion as well social exclusion in india cannot be equated with the eurocentric or western approach of exclusion and cannot only be described in terms of the labor market framework caste imposes restrictions on socio cultural intercourse it stratifies the people as high or low and it offers no choice to change the occupation there are restrictions on exogamous marriages on a commensuality and therefore caste serves as the most exhaustive and obnoxious of all exclusionary systems so what is the approach that one needs to adopt to deal with the situation of course it is the opposite to social exclusion and that is social inclusion which can be described as a process by which excluded social groups are accommodated they are amalgamated and assimilated with the social groups placed in top of the social hierarchy of the social system so affirmative action to change the circumstances and habits that lead to social exclusion are very relevant in india the world bank has defined social inclusion as the process of improving the ability opportunity and dignity of people disadvantaged on the basis of their identity to take part in society 
one can outline different attributes of inclusiveness and basically four attributes of inclusiveness have been clearly identified these are number one opportunity which should be created to earn a living and to enhance the income over time the next is capability and it is the economy providing the means for the people to create a conducive environment for them so that they are able to make uh, full use of available opportunities then the next important aspect is access and the economy must provide the means to bring opportunities and capabilities together and all should have access to this uh, and of course lastly security uh, there is a question that must be raised that is the economy providing masses uh, with the ability to protect themselves against a temporary or a permanent loss and the latest example of this is the current pandemic where lakhs of people have lost their jobs and especially in the unorganized sector they have lost an opportunity to earn their livelihood now uh, all these can definitely be achieved by taking the support of constitution and here again one can talk about directive principles of state policy which can definitely be the guiding force equal justice right to work to education right to public assistance a just and human condition of work all these are clearly stipulated as part of the directive principles of state policy and article 14 which clearly mentions equality before law article 15 which prohibits any kind of discrimination article 16 which stipulates equal opportunity and article 17 uh, which has outlined abolition of untouchability article 21 which talks about protection of life and personal liberty then article 23 and 24 which are kind of economic safeguards uh, then article 330 and 332 uh, which are provisions for political representation uh, in addition to this a number of acts like protection of civil rights act 1955 and then in 1976 abolition of bonded labor system act then uh, in 1989 scst prevention of atrocities act and again 1989 child labor prohibition and regulation act these are some of the provisions that are very important and uh, they can they have helped and in fact uh, uh, the country has gone a long way uh, because of such clear cut description of policy of inclusion that was part of our constitution so we can say that empowering the socially excluded through supportive programs from the school level to the university level and then thereafter uh, uh, when the question of employment comes is very important also there is a need to preserve the cultural heritage and the diversity of ethnic groups in this process there is a need to create an atmosphere of communal harmony by channelizing social inclusion with the resources available this also implies a kind of a bottom up approach along with a top down approach so merely by making policies as part of governance is not really going to help unless and until there is also a bottom up approach and masses are mobilized and uh, there is some kind of uh, you know a uh, tactic that is devised from time to time to make things work now when we are talking about inclusive growth uh, a very important role that one particular sector can play in promoting inclusive growth is that of agriculture however there are several issues 
in agriculture that need to be outlined. For example, deceleration in growth from 3.5 percent during 1981 to 97 to 2 percent during 1997 to 2005, which indicates some kind of a decline in yield growth. So, it is important to consider as to why there is this decline and which particular section of society is feeling the pinch. I would taking up this issue at length in the coming lecture. Thank you.